Today I'm going to be installing some rollers on the back of my RV. Pretty much right there. So previously these were what were welded to the frame of my RV. These little triangle deals. This I measured as 7 inches, uh, which doesn't give me much ground clearance. Um, I was uh, just this last uh, last week I went on a trip and uh, it was paved the whole way. I drug three different times uh, just uh, pulling out of parking lots. One time even I was leaving the uh, Blackwater dump station and they just had a little uh, dip in the road for drainage and uh, even going through that I drug. Um, so you know that that doesn't give me much ground clearance. Now I'm gonna put this on here so that way whenever I first off I get more ground clearance and second off when I do bottom out it, uh, it, it rolls on this instead of uh, scraping on this. This is not going to last long. As you can see, I haven't, I, you know, I bottomed out a few times with it and we're down to uh, not very much material left. Let me show you something on the other side. So here on this side, Here's the roller that I had, or the uh, little V-shaped deal I had on this side, and apparently, going over or something, I uh, I bottomed out, and uh, it just bent the whole thing. So uh, obviously, these are not very heavy duty. Now, uh, notice, you know, it was seven inches. It's down to what, maybe three and a half right now. I didn't damage anything. They've uh, they've built in way too much ground clearance. Now, this is going to depend on the camper that you have. Um, I've got these uh, electronic stabilizer jacks. They were back here. I um, don't know if you can see that. Well, it's on this other side. So it was right here was the center point of it. So I took it out, drilled new holes, and moved it just about a, about a foot uh, closer to the front. Obviously, if you moved them too far forward, you would uh, you'd be losing some of the stabilization. But uh, the back of my camper just has a couple of uh, recliners and the recliners are even like right here so uh, I don't think this is going to make any difference in the actual uh, stabilization but the other thing you want to consider before deciding the size of your rollers is what I did here was I took a I've got that parked on a wheel you know on a, on a wooden block uh, two by eight or whatever to level the camper I just stapled my string to it and then you pull it back you know the wheels gonna be well I've got a deal in there right now but, you know roughly about there so as you can see from this string pulled tight there's pr plenty I will still I'm, I'm getting more ground clearance before rubbing and I'm even going to have room for the for everything behind the rear bumper. This rear bumper is a different project. I don't want to get off on a tangent on what that is, but um, you know I'll be able to put a uh, basket on the back here, and I still should have you know before it would have been way down here, even with the extra ground clearance, I still should have plenty of uh, of room to not drag a uh, a basket or a, a dirt bike or anything. I decided to put back there. Um, so those are some considerations to have uh, I'm going to the I bought these rollers off of uh, e-trailer I'll uh, I'll include a link uh, to where to buy those at um, but yeah it should be pretty simple I'm just gonna weld them on and uh, and we're gonna call it good okay so make sure you grind off the paint before welding you want to make sure you're welding on a uh, bare metal surface uh, if you want your weld to be good strong Welding, you want to make sure you hit both corners before welding because uh, the metal will 
move it. If you tack both corners, it'll keep it from moving. Okay, I've got it welded all the way completely on. I've let it cool down. I've uh, touched. I've cleaned it with the uh, wire brush, and I've painted over all of it just to kind of keep it from rusting. The last step is obviously to uh, add the roller. So we'll go bolt to the. washer to the roller to the next washer through the hole. Now uh, 
I don't know why, but uh, this appears to be a 18 millimeter, and then on the the nut, it's a one of those locking nuts is a 19. Um, what I don't understand is since when did an 18 millimeter wrench and and uh, nut become a common thing? As far as I know, most sets that you buy don't even come with 18. Uh, I remember the first time I needed an 18 was when I was doing brakes on a um, on a GM. All the brake components they had 18 millimeter bolts. I had to go buy a specific 18 millimeter bolt just for that. Um, that's my little rant. But there you go. There's the roller. Um, and just so you can see, so there's my string, plenty of clearance for my landing gear, and as it continues out, the string's frayed a little bit because of all the welding that I did, but as it continues out, I will clear the dirt bike carrier, which like I said, that's going to come up in another video. Uh, those newspapers are taped up there for painting. Uh, that's not normal. Um, but it should hold the dirt bike carrier because I've got it mounted up a little bit higher. The actual basket though, um, if I were to use a basket, I would be losing a little bit of my ground clearance. Um, you know, like I said, my last ones were, what, that far? So, and I scraped quite often. I'm getting quite a bit more of an angle, uh, you know, that I can approach at before bottoming out. So even with a basket, I may just have to be a little more careful about where I drive, but even with the basket, I should have gained quite a bit of a ground clearance. stuff like this I know people who use their impact drivers for everything but, well it does make it easier still fun using the hand tools sometimes